Solitude is the absence of human activity. It is also defined as a remote or uninhabited place. This is the fence between alone and lonely. I struggle climbing over. I sit on top, humpty dumpty towards the ground, a cracked eggshell people carelessly stepped on. I was broken. Solitude became four white walls designed by Jigsaw himself, an insane asylum testing my will to live. Picture me, hair falling, weight gain, face full of acne, a representation of the men I lost, the enemies in my way, and the gluttony exhausting me. I was slowly dying. Brings back memories of studying during finals week, cramming my brain with stacks of thick history books under dim lighting, sitting for hours, analyzing my story. I needed seeds of love in full bloom, flowers who could survive April showers and a hot summer June. Then the breakthrough flashed over my head, a bright light breaking this egg into a new perspective, solitude is now sandy beaches, warm rays of sunshine and cool breezes for clarity, the blueprints for my future, the blueprints developing structures for the home inside me, doors wide open. I can throw a house party no one wants to ruin, the home of a welcoming neighbor, a contributing member of society, the conscious individual, explored by Plato's mind, scripted by Da Vinci's words, painted by Picasso's hands, I am a true piece of work. My flaws hang for interpretation in their natural form. I am the books written to escape my mental paradise. The sometimes good, bad, and ugly, the Galapagos Island inside me adapting to survive. The long lost folk tales of my dreams. I am an unknown vinyl in a record store. I'll listen to myself over and over. My voice is the music I grew to love. I sing that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that gushy stuff in the little off key, but I still make it work. A tool unlocking my happiness while I craft a master key. Look at me. Hair long, eating healthy, clear skin, I'm fucking glowing. A representation of the love growing inside me. The spiritual orgasm arching my back into ascension and the manifestation of all things I've earned. Leaving my anxiety in the past, it turns into fossil stone. Delicately excavated by higher entities holding the power to break my bones. They brush gently against the surface and remove all of my old dirt only to discover the rare species of a woman who can stand alone. When the creator Ipao Nemoani Omateo sent me from the stars to earth, I didn't ask to be Mexican. I just got lucky. I didn't ask to be the hummingbird's friend or creator of high civilization, to be the greatest farmer of the world or the inventor of zero. I just got lucky because mis abuelitos Mis abuelitas. Abuelito, abuelita, yo te quiero tanto, tanto, yo te canto este canto. Mis nanas, mis tatas, era nawa, cacamaya, zapoteco, mexica, we're Mexicans, hardworking, caring, genius, nanas de anahuac, courageous tatas de cuitlahuac, loving and sharing. Have you eaten, mijo? ¿Ya comiste, mija? Today, tomorrow, again and again, I didn't ask to be Mexican. I didn't ask to be the child of a beautiful dark brown obsidian-eyed mohead. I just got lucky. I didn't ask to understand procession and how the sky moves one degree to the western direction every 72 years. Didn't ask for the connection to Teotihuacan or Monte Alban to have constructed La Gran Tenochtitlan. I just got lucky. I didn't ask to be a master mason, a flower arranger, a bonampak mural painter, nor did I ask for the recipes to tamales or a guacamole. Didn't ask for the chocolate, for the simmering mole. I just got lucky. I didn't ask to be an eagle or jaguar or xochicalco or mitla, to love the hottest chiles, quetzalcoatl, nahuateo, cintle, nor did I ask to be one of Tonantzin's sons, one of the turquoise prince's precious ones, or to have a grand legacy of flower and songs. I just got lucky. This poem's called Canyon City. I wrote it for uh, my students. I teach Latino studies over in Azusa. Driving through Canyon City, find botanicas and barbershops, mercados, and mothers pushing strollers. Mothers pushing strollers down streets named for a citrus pass, schools in a city named for a rancho. 
Arancha owned by Dalton, a man who sided with the Mexicans during the Mexican-American War. Mexican-American War, what remains today is a romanticized history, but what was erased is the fact that the San Gabriel Valley is indigenous land. Indigenous land, there are spirits that still echo through these canyons. These canyons, these mountains, I breathe the crisp morning air. A tardy bell rings as I watch students make their way, trying to find a way after traveling many roads. Many roads lead to a classroom. They enter, holding back a rumble in their bellies. Too many painful nights, painful nights they don't want to remember. Nights full of stars, they can't even see the magic they are made of. Because in the morning, they sit where it has been erased, degraded, left out of the curriculum. The curriculum, the other teachers say, it's too advanced, it's too challenging, it's too much, it's too real because it sounds too much like the truth. They call it un-American, but this was Mexico once. This was Mexico once, I tell them but they don't believe me. You only believe what you see. And so they tell me how the cops stopped one the other night, how another has slept in a car, how another has been locked up, beat up, told they're good for nothing, no good, Mexicans, Latinos, Chicanos, brown. Brown, they tell me you get stopped around here for looking suspicious, for looking like you don't belong. Belong where, I ask, read for yourself in these books. These books were banned in Arizona. Books are still banned in this country because they don't want you to know the truth about yourself and where you come from. If you tell a people they're inferior long enough, they begin to believe it. Listen close. As darkness falls, the spirits begin to rattle their bones, hear them echo through the canyons. As helicopters loom overhead, shining light, you run to darkness as the palm trees sway. Listen to the song they are teaching you. A song that says no more running away from the truth. No more lies, no more foreign miners' tax, no more celebrating lynchings of Mexicans or hangman trees, no more Mexican schools, no more Mexicans can only swim on Mondays because they empty the dirty water for the white people to swim on Tuesday, no more unequal schools, no more draft to Vietnam, no more racial profiling school to prison pipeline or police brutality, no more deportations, no more ICE. No more putting our children in cages, no more calling us names, no more calling us animals, but mostly no more racist counselors or teachers telling you no. No, you can't go to college or take this class about yourself. No more go back to Mexico. No more go back to where you came from. No more go back to where you came from. No more stay where you're supposed to be, here, right here, where they tell you you're supposed to be. Tell them where you're from. Tell them you are brown. Tell them you are beautiful. Tell them you are a smoking mirror revealing truth. Tell them you are flint. And that means your words will cut anyone who tries to tell you you are anything but brilliant. Tell them you are the dreams of your ancestors and how their spirits became butterflies who flew to the night sky and became the stars. They watch over you. Tell them who you are and let the canyons echo your name. I am he. I am he whose parents fled the horot-like killing of the innocent by CIA operatives. I am Jesus. I'm Jesus, but not Christ. I am Jesus, who crosses the border at night. I'm father, I'm son, I'm indígena. And according to some, I ain't holy and I ain't got no spirit. Y mi madre, mi madre Guadalupe, mira cómo sufre. Ella trabajando en la maquiladora, solo le pagan un peso la hora. Y mi padre José, pues no sé, I lost track of him when he went up north to the United States of Babylon looking for that road paved with gold where they needed his soul to be sold to multinational corporations. So you see... I am he, Jesus. And when I became of age, I made my way down to the river where John the Coyote led me into the water. And as I emerged, I seen a light from above the sky shining down on me and it said, you, yes, you, you are under arrest. And there was a migra helicopter coming after me. So I fled into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights without nothing to eat or drink. And I was tempted. Tempted there by devil-like narcotraficantes, but I was saved. Saved by angels, border angels, that is. So you see, I am he, Jesus, a carpenter. Or at least that's what I say when I'm standing outside of the Home Depot, but I'm being disrespected by my own people whose ancestors' life to mine is like a sequel, but they don't see me like no equal. They call me illegal, wetback, spick, all this coming from my own Judas-like people. Y el politico, el politico corrupto punches Pilate like washes his hands as we are criminalized, as we are terrorized, as we are taken from our sanctuaries, booked, deported, never heard from, but true criminals... True corporate criminals are bailed out and set free. So you see, I am he. So next time you're about to break that bread, remember that it represents more than just my body because it was I who baked it.
And next time you're about to drink your wine, it represents more than just my blood and my tears because it was I who picked it from sunrise to sunset. And here we are, crucified, crucified on your cross of eternal debt. And above my head, above my head reads N-A-F-T-A. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do.